Top Gun Maverick has finally taken flight, 36 years after the original Top Gun, and it is locked and loaded with amazing behind-the-scenes secrets and easter eggs. Go for takeoff! The movie kicks it old school from the beginning, starting with the same opening title screen and theme song as the original flick back in 1986. But something's changed. There's a little addition to the description of the Top Gun program. It talks about the handful of men and women, because times have changed and women are pilots now too. The movie's opening sequence is also a tribute to the original, as Danger Zone by Kenny Loggins screams over the sights and sounds of fighter jets taking off and landing on the aircraft carrier. Take a look at the bobblehead shot. Can you make the character out? Well, the name the ship is being filmed on is the Abraham Lincoln, so… Top Gun Maverick isn't just some upgraded CG special effects showcase. Tom Cruise, director Joseph Kosinski, and director of photography Claudio Miranda wanted the film to be a truly visceral experience, so they actually took their actors up in the air and filmed their performances while they experienced the G-forces of aircraft maneuvers. This meant the actors had to go through rigorous training in order to learn how to withstand the new physical demands of the flights. According to Miles Teller, who plays Rooster, three of the six new actors puked during every flight filming day while up in the jets. Teller, for his part, had a medical emergency while filming his flight sequences. At one point, he broke out in hives from head to toe and had to go see a doctor. The doctor told him that he was suffering from an allergic reaction brought on by the presence of jet fuel in his bloodstream. When Teller reported back to Tom Cruise with the fact that he had jet fuel in his blood, Cruise said, Yeah, I was born with it, kid. Alright, let's get to know some more members of the new class. Monica Barbaro plays Lieutenant Natasha Trace, call sign Phoenix. Pretty aptly named as a phoenix is a mythical bird famous for being born again from its own fiery ashes. Trace is the one pilot who crashes during training but lives to fly another day. There's another secret involving Phoenix. Take a look at that spade patch she's wearing. It's a patch for the VFA-41 Black Aces, who flew in what was called the Gulf of Sidra incident back in 1981. What's so interesting about that? The Gulf of Sidra is what the final action sequence in the original movie is based on. Sitting next to her at the briefing is Bob, Lieutenant Robert Floyd, played by Lewis Pullman. He too has a patch worth talking about. His reads VFA-51, and it's an Easter egg tribute to the Navy fighter squadron known as the Screaming Eagles. See? The eagle and the star? Makes sense. Anyway, that's the squadron Viper from the first movie, played by Tom Skerritt, flew in along with Maverick's father. Another cool thing to know about Lewis Pullman. He's the son of actor Bill Pullman, whom you might recognize as President Thomas Whitmore from the Invasion summer blockbuster Independence Day. And while Pops Pullman piloted an F.A. 18 Hornet through the miracle of movie magic for that flick, Lewis legit flew inside the real updated model, the Super Hornet, in Top Gun Maverick. Danny Ramirez plays Mickey Fanboy Garcia. He flies with Payback, aka Ruben Fitch. Take a look at his helmet. Notice the front of his call sign? It's the same font used for the credits of the original Star Trek television series. Jake Hangman Saracen is played by Glenn Powell. Where the other pilots are concerned, he's too much of a cocky opportunist, putting himself before the team more often than not. Can't fault the dude for his taste in music, though. While Phoenix engages Bob in a friendly game of nine ball, Hangman spins Slow Ride by Foghat on the jukebox. Did you see the numbers he pushed? 8 and 6, 86, the year the original Top Gun was released in theaters. Another interesting tidbit regarding this scene comes from the fact that they're playing 9-ball. Sure, it's a pretty common pool hall game, but it holds extra weight when you realize that Tom Cruise played Vincent Loria, a pool hall junkie with a penchant for 9-ball, in Martin Scorsese's sequel to The Hustler, The Color of Money. In fact, during production of that film, he had to jump back into the cockpit for reshoots on Top Gun. I think it's safe to say the new crew is lucky he didn't hustle their table to pay for everyone's drinks in the bar. The bar is the first time in a long while Maverick catches a glimpse of Rooster, who eventually finds himself parked at an upright piano where he busts out a rendition of Great Balls of Fire, just like his dad before him. That's right, Rooster is the son of Nick Goose Bradshaw, Bradley Bradshaw. Props to Miles Teller. In preparation for the role, he insisted on learning to play Great Balls of Fire on the piano. Teller studied music when he was younger and still dabbles a bit. One of his most notable credits is the part of percussionist Andrew Neiman from the hard-hitting music school drama Whiplash. Speaking of Whiplash, is it any surprise that Maverick himself, Tom Cruise, was behind all this craziness? Watch him handle the G's like a boss as he flies a test run of the pilot's mission. 
Maverick was prepared for this run, thanks to the Dark Star flight in the beginning of the movie. Did you know that the Dark Star hypersonic jet Mav flies is based on a concept craft that is supposed to be flown remotely? The craft was being called the SR-72 and was revealed in 2013 by Skunk Works, the highly classified tech lab under Lockheed Martin. Keep your eyes open and you'll see the Skunk Works mascot logo during the flight, first on the jet's tail fin and later on Mav's control stick as he takes the aircraft beyond Mach 10. The Lockheed Martin logo can also be seen on reversal shots of the same control. Imagine feeling the immense power of an aircraft firsthand like Rear Admiral Chester Kane played by Ed Harris when the Dark Star defiantly flies over his head. Though the Dark Star plane is a post-production effect, it was composited over another real jet that actually did that flyover and actually did blow the roof off the security booth. What's more, the filmmakers were only given one shot to get the take, so what you're looking at is a very, very lucky accident. There's another plane of interest. You see that prop plane Maverick is tinkering with in the hangar? It's not just a prop, as in movie prop, it's a propeller plane. A P-51 Mustang, it's real, it's fully functional, and it belongs to Tom Cruise, who has been fully licensed to fly it since 1994. It's his favorite aircraft, and he puts it to good use, not just as a picture plane, but for the sake of one of his co-stars. Jennifer Connelly plays Penny Benjamin, Maverick's love interest in the movie. It just so happens that Jennifer had a fear of flying, so Tom helped his co-star overcome that fear by taking her on rides in his 1946 vintage aircraft. In an interview with Good Morning America's Michael Strahan, she talked about how the experience was very therapeutic. To see her in the movie, you never know she was afraid of anything. That wasn't the end of her thrilling experiences on the movie. Did you know that Jennifer Connelly had to learn to sail for the film? And that's her actually helming the 41-foot yacht in ridiculously choppy water. Also, what you're seeing is actually a reshoot. On The Late Show with Stephen Colbert, she told Colbert that they originally shot off the coast of San Diego. The water was great, the views were breathtaking, and there were even dolphins in the water. But Cruz wasn't having it, because it wasn't exciting enough for the audience. So they moved the scene to San Francisco, which elevated the level of danger. But that's both actors really there navigating the rough waves together. Penny Benjamin is something of an Easter egg herself, well, maybe more of a deep cut. Does her appearance seem out of place, like a token romantic interest for the sake of having one in the movie? Nope, she's actually more than that. Did you know she's mentioned in the first Top Gun? Let's rewind all the way back to 1986, when Stinger, played by James Tolkien, calls Maverick and Anthony Edwards as Goose into his office. He makes a cheeky comment about Mav's history of insubordination, which includes making a high-speed pass at one admiral's daughter. Who's that daughter? Goose hits the nail on the head, Penny Benjamin. Though Penny is a departure from Mav's love interest in the first movie, astrophysicist Charlie Blackwood played by Kelly McGillis, there's a little wink to Charlie thanks to Penny's taste in cars. That beautiful piece of machinery she's leaning on is a 1973 Porsche 911, and it's an homage to the one Charlie drove in the original Top Gun, a 1958 Porsche 356. Huh, I guess Maverick does have a type. Though Charlie is only in the movie in spirit, there is one character from the original Top Gun who makes a full-fledged return, Tom Kazansky, aka Iceman, played by Val Kilmer. In Top Gun Maverick, Iceman has reached the rank of Admiral, and he's the one responsible for putting Maverick in charge of training the younger pilots for Mission Impossible. I mean, the impossible mission. Sorry, just a little cruise comedy there. Take a look at the walls in Iceman's home office. See anything familiar? Here's a hint. Turn your attention to the front left wall. There's a plaque framed in wood with an aircraft on it. It's the Top Gun Award Iceman and Slider one in the first Top Gun. Wow, way to rub it in, Ice. On returning to the role and reuniting with Cruz, Kilmer told Entertainment Weekly that it was as if no time had passed when he was on set. We blew a lot of takes laughing so much, it was really fun and special. Sadly, in the case of Val Kilmer, art was imitating life. Just like Iceman, he was suffering from throat cancer, and at the time of filming, his vocal cords were so damaged that he couldn't talk. Iceman speaks a few lines at the end of his and Mav's scene together, but what you're hearing is actually a synthetic voice generator that was able to mimic Kilmer's real voice. Of all the elements in place for Top Gun Maverick, it just wouldn't be a Top Gun sequel without a hot bod sports montage. Top Gun had sand volleyball. Maverick's got Oceanside dogfight football. For the scene, the actors all wanted to look good and be in tip-top shape. 
so they got pretty annoyed by the fact that director Joseph Kosinski wouldn't tell them when he planned to shoot the scene. They all had to maintain their fitness plans for what turned out to be the entire production because the sequence was one of the last ones they ended up shooting. Sounds more like a high school coach than a film director to me. Which isn't a bad thing at all. In fact, did you know that the original Top Gun is actually a sports movie in disguise? Co-writers Jack Epps Jr. and Jim Cash confirmed as much in the behind-the-scenes documentary Danger Zone, The Making of Top Gun. Funny enough, Top Gun Maverick seems to share elements with a very specific film classic. That classic? Star Wars Episode IV A New Hope. Both include a pilot with daddy issues. The pilot is taken under the wing of an elder who knew their father. Both are sent on virtual suicide missions through a trench run that ends at a tiny target, a ventilation hatch, or an exhaust port that they only get one shot at. Ok, ok, there were no lightsabers in Top Gun Maverick, but there were pool cues. I hope you enjoyed this video and found some cool new details you might have missed from Top Gun Maverick. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Movie Logic for more daily movie trivia, secrets, and Easter eggs.